through to the present day and there's a variety of items, things like sort of textile collectibles, badges, brooches, photographs, film, ephemera and, and numerous publications. It's taken about 12 months of preparation to put the bid into the Heritage Lottery Fund and fortunately we were successful. After that we've done about eight months of research where we've had two volunteers who've come in and assisted the curators going through the museum's motoring reference library. National Motor Museum's 1926 Eccles Caravan. When developing the Caravans and Sharabangs project, we looked at kind of redisplaying the caravan. The chair that's just to the left of me here folds down so two people can fit on the bed, and the same on the bed at the back of the caravan as well. So it kind of really struck us how similar caravans from the 1920s are in design to caravans today. <laughs> Caravan Company was formed shortly after the First World War in 1919. A, a father and son purchased a failing company and um, decided to build trailer caravans. We've also spent a lot of time in the caravan um, cleaning it and preparing it ready for the exhibition. And during that time, we were able to sort of discover lots of secrets inside the caravan. I just knew that she come back, for I love her and she loves me and say. It's basically the size of the actual caravan. The caravan is quite a large vehicle, but it's relatively easy to display. Caravans are a little bit more awkward to display as they take up a lot of space and people can normally like to be able to look into them. It's trying to get them so, so you can actually see inside the actual caravan or else you're just looking at the external box, which is a problem. Sharabangs were an early form of motor coach as we know today, which first appeared in the early 20th century, but they were a lot more primitive. They were basically a chassis um, with rows of bench seats, open top, so you're open to the elements with just a little hood over the top. So we were able to purchase this unique collection. It had been collected by a private collector for over a period of 40 years, and for a long time the museum had been really keen to acquire this collection to fill a gap. So you can see here, it's over 450 images um, of different charabangs, different outings. There's lots of information on the postcards. So, for example, there's one here which says that it's a, an outing, a works outing from 1922. So, after the First World War, it was only really the wealthy that could afford to own a motor car. And the charabang enabled people with uh, less of an income to be able to go out and take motoring day trips. At the start of the First World War, there were only 100 lorries in British Army service. Um, I mean, this was a time when horses were traditionally used for transport during the war, things like the cavalry, things like transporting ammunition around. By the end of the war, the army had sort of over 34,000 lorries in its service because um, they, they really proved their worth on the front line they quite often have hooks at the front which were used in wartime to be um, to pull the lorries out of the mud and also there's brush guards on, on the front of the radiators which kind of stops mud being flicked up into the engine so the booming charabang industry in the 1920s also led to a booming industry in photography where people set up businesses where they would take photos of people in the charabang sort of halfway through the day then they would go off on their day trip and then come home and on their way home they would then pick up the photo of them that had been taken of their um, of their journey. to fall into